Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Megan and I am a homeschool mom to a bunch of kiddos. Six to be exact, five are actually homeschool age. And today I'm gonna talk to you about IEW's history-based writing. So today's video is actually part of a collaboration that is all about IEW, which I know gets thrown around constantly as a recommendation for writing and grammar in the homeschool world, also for spelling and phonics and things like that. But today, my video is going to focus on their history-based writing, which we are utilizing this year for my seventh grade son, and I can't wait to share with you guys all about this curriculum. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this video is part of a collaboration all about IEW. There are lots of other homeschool mamas who are joining into this collab. It is hosted by my friend Yasmin over at Mommy on the Move. And you will love Yasmin. She has become a dear friend of mine. And she asked if I would like to be part of this collab because we use IEW. Now, there's going to be lots of things down in the playlist. So if you would like to know all about IEW and what it has to offer, which by the way, IEW stands for the Institute for Excellence in Writing. And if you are interested in seeing inside of or hearing more about any of their offerings that they have, make sure you check out the playlist in the description below. Head over to Yasmin's channel as well. She is a great resource for homeschooling, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's dive right in, and I will show you what this program is all about. Now, admittedly, when it comes to writing, writing is always something that has always come pretty easy for me. And so when it came to actually teaching the process of writing, specifically just like the creative part of the writing and really like putting, just putting it all together, it was really hard for me to demonstrate that. Um, in a way that worked for my oldest son, who is in seventh grade now. But of course, like when we were starting the, like actually starting writing as a subject, um, it was kind of intimidating to me because I didn't really know where to start. Yes, I know there's a lot of things out there and that's how I landed on IEW. So last year we actually did their structure and style program, which I'm pretty sure one of the homeschool moms that's in the playlist is sharing about structure and style. I found that extremely helpful. So some people shy away from IEW because it is so structured, but I have seen the fruits of how the structure creates that bounding board for launching them into thinking and understanding the concept of writing as a whole, especially for kids that maybe writing doesn't come as easy to. As I said, we did structure and style last year. That was super helpful in starting the whole writing process full on, and it leads straight into these other theme-based writings that IEW offers. And there's some other ones in the playlist as, le as well. So this one in particular, this series, the history-based writing, and there's two different levels of these. There's a high school level and a middle school level, which is what this is. So the history-based writing is for around sixth through eighth grade. I would honestly recommend at least going through another one of IEW's programs before starting the history-based writing. Definitely, <laughs> I think, structure and style, even if you did just like one level of structure and style, if your child goes through it and does well, then they should be able to transition into this curriculum quite easily. Now, I am gonna show you inside, like I said, but I did wanna kind of lay the groundwork before we actually dive into looking at it um, because I want you to understand that there is a very specific method that is used in this curriculum and you yourself as the teacher needs to understand that method as well. So this curriculum is based off of 
making outlines. So it's a great skill for our kids to be able to learn how to make outlines. It helps them to summarize text and what they're reading and to be able to then in turn put it into their own words and writing. So that is a short version of what the method is all about. Um, and in order to teach that properly, it is recommended that you as the parent go through their seminar course on how to teach that structure and style method. Okay, so I'm gonna show you inside and how these are set up. So obviously this is the teacher's manual and then there is a student book. And so I am going to start with the teacher's manual here. Now, what's nice about the teacher's manual is it does show you reduced copies of all of the student pages too. So you never have to like look over their shoulder to be able to see what they're working on. You can sit, you know, beside them comfortably or <laughs> whatever comfortably in order to kind of facilitate and teach them. And um, it is set up quite well to work independently for the student as well. It gives them checklists and things like that, which I'll show you in just a little bit. But let's dive into this teacher's manual. So one thing I do want to show you is that in the front of your teacher's manual, you'll have this blue page about accessing downloads. What's nice about this is that if you have a student that needs some simplified texts like source texts that are simplified you can actually go to these downloads and you can actually download the simplified version of those source texts which is super super helpful for students that need it a little more simplified okay so the first thing that i want to look at with you guys is actually the contents just so you can get an idea now, what is also nice about this is, so we are obviously doing medieval history in our homeschool this year. And so this has lined up very, very well. And what's also nice about it is it includes literature selections, which has been great because a lot of those literature selections actually coincide with some of the suggestions with our history curriculum as well. So this is going to cover your writing. It's going to back up all of the grammar and usage that you are teaching your child and that your child is going through and probably fix it grammar. If you're using IEW, it fits well with this. And then also, um, it also is going to tie in vocabulary and it even has some vocabulary tests you can utilize after each section within here as well, like each one of these sections. So what it is going to cover is you are going to focus on um, note taking and outlines as the first one and that is just kind of smoothing them into this next thing. So if they go through structure and style, they will be well acquainted with the skill of making outlines and note taking and that needs to be solidified before they move into the rest of this. They are going to be learn to write from notes that are taken. They are going to work on retelling narrative stories, summarizing a reference, writing from pictures, summarizing multiple references, inventive writing, formal essay models, and formal critique and response to literature. And then of course there's a just for fun section. Now this does require MLA format. They can find the um, example of that in the appendix of their student book as well as in the teacher book, it's in there as well. As I said, it does show the reduced copies of the student work, which is nice. Also, it's going to include any answers, sample outlines, and again, those are just samples. So if, the, if they're acquainted with the structure and style series, you'll see when I get to the outlines here in a second. So it's gonna include sample outlines in here, brainstorming techniques or ideas, some games for review purposes like vocabulary and stuff, and then other teacher helps. And as I said, it is recommended to go through the teaching, writing, structure and style seminar for the teachers. Okay, and I also mentioned that it is set up in a way to work well independently for the students. So here's an example of just like the layout. It has a whole um, sample schedule laid out at the beginning of each lesson for the child 
in the student book. And so it's set up to really be, um, to work well kind of independently. Obviously, there's still some things that you need to go over and facilitate with them and, and teach kind of at the beginning. But for the most part, it works really well for them to go through independently, which I think is a great skill to, to have and to sharpen. So those checklists are great. It not only has checklists for your student, but it also has checklists for the teacher, which you will see in just a second, on how to grade different things. So the literature suggestions are broken down by units. As you can see over to the right, where it says literature suggestions. It's also gonna have the vocabulary for each unit and lesson that they do, and um, specifically what they are working on. So like L-Y adverbs, the who, which clause, strong verb, band words, and things like that. So they have specific things that they are introducing and working on. And again, if you are doing fix-it grammar alongside of this, it is going to line up very, very well. So as far as how the literature lines up, I'm going to flip to the back to the appendix area. It does have it laid out a little bit better with some different suggestions that you can have, especially based on your child's age and um, what you think is appropriate for them. And it's going to tell you which lessons they should be reading the literature selections with. Again, you don't have to even use the literature selections. It's just there for you if you want to help make this a more complete curriculum and also to tie it in with history. Okay, so I just turned to a random lesson in here just so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of how a lesson goes. This is almost, mm, I would say a good third of the way through the book, lesson 11 here, and it is on Alfred the Great. It is telling you specifically what it is working on. It is summarizing a reference, and also the writing topic is Alfred the Great, and it has some optional student reading assignments written here. And again, we I just showed you where those are in the appendix. Now, this is what the student page looks like for this lesson. So it has specific goals and you as the teacher are going to go over that with your student. And it has the vocabulary words there. Um, so to practice the unit four structural model, to create a keyword outline, write a one paragraph report about Alfred the Great, correctly add a new dress up, to correctly apply the comma rule, take vocabulary quiz three and correctly use new vocabulary words and it has the specific ones they want you to use. And then it has any notes. Classes that meet weekly should complete days one and two in class. So this works great for a co-op setting, but again, it also works really, really great independently at home. Um, so you would begin class with vocabulary quiz three um, and then you're gonna have the review section. So all of this is written for the student, but again, as the, as the facilitator, as the parent slash teacher, you are going to go over those things with them each day. And again, you do not have to follow this exact schedule, but it does work well to create some better writing if you spread it out the way they suggest it. Um, and then it also has some review there. So this is what their source text looks like. So this is the source text for Alfred the Great. So they basically, they read through this and then they are going to come and do a keyword outline. Now, if you have never done IEW, this is gonna look like gobbledygook. <laughs> it's nice because it does tell you like this symbol is for like king. Um, this usually means uh, went, went to, conquered, moved into, something like that. And it breaks all that down and introduces each of the symbols. They can even come up with their own symbols. Um, and so they, the point is they are reading the source text. And then for each sentence, they are coming up with their little keyword outline to help them remember what each sentence was about. So once they have gone through and made their keyword outline with the most important parts of each sentence in the text, then they come over, well, this is just added things, okay? So this is giving you like a style 
and things like that. So this is part of this lesson. But I'm going to show you what you are eventually going to do. So there's other activities the students are going to do in this one. But, um, but what the students do is they come up with a composition using their keyword outline. And this is what you are going to grade it by. This, they have this checklist and you have this checklist for when you are going through and grading it. But it's nice that they have it too so they can go through and put a check to make sure that they have included each of these things. And again, the MLA format that is in the appendix of both the student notebook but also in the teacher. So you can go through and teach that in the first lesson, which is what I did. And we go over it each time just to, you know, make sure, oh yeah, remember you've got to line up your margins and all of those things. We're several lessons in, but pretty soon I won't have to do those reminders because I probably actually don't need to do them now, but, <laughs> but I have been. But um, anyway, so even like capitalization, in marks and punctuation, all of those things, they are going to go through and refine. So they are learning basically how to summarize text and put it in their own words and also how to dress it up and make the writing more interesting. And so if you have a child who does struggle with putting all the things together, this is a great curriculum for teaching them kind of a structure-based writing so that they feel confident to do it on their own. Now, my friend Leilani over at Living with Eve, she has been doing this curriculum with her children and in her co-op for a while. And her, she can probably speak um, about how much she has seen improvement in her children's writing and the confidence that she has seen in their writing because they've used it for such a long time. So this is another example of another lesson. Oops, let's see. Here is another lesson in the student notebook, just so you can get an idea. And it looks exactly like the reduced down pages in the teacher's manual. And it's going to have this all here. It also has any new structures that you need to go over. And um, here is the text and where they're going to do their outline. And all of this is over the course of several days. It's not obviously all in one day. Then they're going to work with their um, new uh, dress-ups and things, new concepts that they're learning to add into their writing. And then this is their checklist for when they write it out. Now, I have my son write his first draft on notebook paper, and then I always have him type his final draft just as good practice in order to um, really get in the habit of proper writing and what that looks like. Okay, one thing I forgot to go over is I mentioned that vocabulary is covered in this curriculum and it is very good vocabulary. So this is some examples. So in the back of the student notebook, there is a card for each vocabulary word in the back that they can use. You can also use it in order to play review games with them. And it has some pictures to help remind, my son also writes them on index cards just for practice to get it in his head. But um, you can use these. I, I like that it gives pictures for the words to kind of help them remember what each word means. And so here's some examples of some of the words. But all of the words are back here, as well as the vocabulary quizzes that you can utilize at the end of each unit. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, if you're using Fix-It Grammar alongside this program, then your child is also gonna get other vocabulary words through that avenue as well. And so it, Combining the two, it makes a great full um, literature and writing program, language arts, literature, writing, all the things are included if you are using this alongside Fix-It Grammar and you don't have to really add anything else in if you are doing it to its full capacity. So they do have this for each stage of history, like each era. So they have ancient, they have medieval, they have more of like the exploration, they have a U.S. history. Um, I think it's U.S. history and then it's modern. I think is the other one. So 
they're great especially if you work on like a classical cycle of history as well which is those four different eras of history it's it's a great one to tie in if you are more of a classical model and even if you aren't if you just want to dive into a specific era of history this is a great way to back that up through your reading and literature or through your reading and writing. As I mentioned in the very beginning, they also have this for a high school level. This is meant more for middle school level. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. Make sure to check out the playlist down below in the description to see other offerings that IEW has. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on future videos. Thanks so much guys and have a blessed day.